a dream I know Deep up my feelings feel Hello reality viewers, welcome back again to Reality Latest Gist, the home of news and politics. For this channel, we they drop news every day and we they react to every video when it comes our way. And our reality news now we they drop for this channel and we they also they talk on as it be. If today not the first time we say they come across this channel, you are highly welcome. Thank you so much for stopping by. And if you are returning subscribers, I appreciate all of you for your massive support. To this channel, I say, May God bless all of you now in Jesus' name, amen. I get video away, I want to present to you now this very moment, and I go to follow you now. They watch the video after we don't watch them together. Make we drop our opinion constructively for the comment section, like our videos, and also share our videos if possible. Bye for now. They are only there to see what they are going to do, you know, how what they, you know, what you know, to get to you know, to, to laugh, okay. And then I saw they are there to just you know laugh. <laughs> so and they, let me warn that Oko Anyola, that fake man in Germany, that I have asked him if he do not come openly in public to apologize. When I will start, when I will start, I no amount of no amount of telephone calls, no amount of peace will make me to stop until I finish. When I will start legal action against him, I will not stop. Because first of all, he is going to pay from the beginning. Every cent I spend, he is going to pay it. So let him now come and address himself. Because when I will start, when I will start and he received the first document from somewhere, I will not go back again. That is how I, 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 I give you time. If he do not come to retract the slandering my name, blackmailing me, if he don't come to withdraw and apologize, when I will start, any day he receive any document, any paper, I will, I'm not going back. All right. So if you know him, you send this video to him. All right, let us continue. The agency was further asked to meet Nollywood and stakeholders. Are you hearing that? The agency was further asked to meet Nollywood and stakeholders on the need for Nollywood producer to extra money ritual stories. My idea is what they stole from me. This is supposed to be Biafra thing. This is supposed to be how we are going to do Biafra. But even as that, is it not Nigeria? It is not going to yield any result. They are going to steal some phone money and squander money I, you know, the, everybody that is involved in this panel now or in this committee now is already going to church to give testimony that uh, he's part of the committee that will look into the new Nollywood movie and all that. It is about money. It is never going to be about giving services to end this ritual killing and end promoting it from the Nigeria movie. Today, they have stolen our idea. The fact that some ritual killers said the learn the money making tricks from some social media platform has further given a flip to the federal government campaign to reach social media of unwholesome content, the minister added. You see? Now, it didn't end here. Let me also show you what another, uh, an, another media uh, reported. Let me show you what another media reported. But you see, they can't give credit to Biafra. They can't. And this is what Mazin they can have been shouting every now and then. He shouted on Radio Biafra. They can't give credit. They can't give credit. They copy and copy and copy. And they are lazy, very, very lazy people. They will be sleeping when we are cracking brain to see how we can use our brain to do something productive. They are sleeping, thinking how to loot money. After we crack our brain, cracking our brain, our brain become productive. They will come to our media to, to steal our ideas. Now, I want you to listen to this as well. The same thing they did here. Stop making movies on ritual killings for money. Nigeria government won Nollywood. Nollywood producers. Exactly what we did here two days ago. 
These people sat in their air-conditioned stupid room and they were listening and watching us and they were taking note of it. But when we tell them how to solve Nigeria's security problem, they don't copy that. They will listen to it and plan how to work against it. We will tell them the reason why you must give Biafra for peace to reign. They don't listen to that. <laughs> no, they don't. When we are telling them now that you can't stop the seat at home, they will do everything to fight against it. They will pay the DUS. They will manipulate them through the political solution. They will manipulate them through the governors. They don't give up on that. When we are now telling them that we are going to impose the economic sanction and enforce it in Biafra land, they begin to call meeting in Abuja. They invited all the governors of the oil producing state because we say we are going to interrupt the oil production. We, not only interruption, we will find a way to make sure we ground it to zero. Yes, I will encourage anybody, if you know what to do, to make sure that you ground the oil production in Nigeria, ground it. Let me tell you one thing. I want to show you something. I want to show you something. One moment. One moment. For those of you who live in Germany, for those of you who live in Germany, let me show you this. Now, the video I'm about to show you now is one of the reasons why we must grant oil production in Nigeria. You see that oil exploration in our land, in Biafra, not in Nigeria, in Biafra land. We must make sure that no oil, in fact, in, in, you know, in time to come, we must make sure that no platform, no platform, no oil platform, no platform will be allowed to explore oil from our land. Do you know what these people are doing? Do you know what they are discussing in Germany? Germany is discussing about Ukraine. Okay? Germany Welcome back. See, Germany, Germany is discussing about Ukraine, the Ukraine and Russia. And do you know what Germany say? Germany say they don't care about what, you know, whatever Russia do, it is not a problem. After all, they will be getting, they are getting oil supply from many countries, including Nigeria. Including Nigeria. So it is because there is another option for Germany to get oil. That is why they are going to go into this crisis with Russia. And I want you to listen to that, uh, to that news here. For those who understand Dutch. Verhandlungen sei es gelungen, dass die EU den ganzen Winter über versorgt sei, auch ohne Russland. Die wichtigsten Lieferanten für Flüssiggas sind die USA, Katar, Ägypten, Aserbaidschan und Nigeria. He said that, you know, it does not matter that uh, after all, they are getting oil from Katar, from Egypt or whatever, and then he mentioned the other country and then Nigeria. So what they are telling you now is that Germany is discussing Ukraine and they are now saying it does not matter what they do, the economic sanction they give to Russia, how they are going to fight Russia. Mm -hmm. After all, they don't need Russia oil because they are getting oil from Nigeria. That is what they are discussing. These people never discuss the killing, the insensitiveness of this Nigeria government. They never discuss how people are being murdered by terrorists in Nigeria every blessed day. 
They never discuss how the Biafra people live, those places where the oil is coming from. Here you are seeing and watching people discussing European country, discussing Ukraine and Azerbaijan or whatever, discussing Ukraine. And as they are discussing Ukraine, they are using Nigeria, uh, you know, to the Nigeria oil, oil that is coming from Biafra land to discuss their own region, to discuss their own continent, to discuss the reason why they, can, they are going to do everything against Russia. Because even Russia don't want to give them oil, they are getting oil from Nigeria. I want you to listen to that. This is what is going on. So we must let them understand that they should minus Nigeria in this oil they are trying to get. They have to minus Nigeria. Until you make them to understand that we minus Nigeria and minus Russia, you can never get your freedom. These people will only rise up when you attack your own natural resources. Your, the oil is our own natural resources. When we stop the oil production, when we call the, when we make sure we call the attention by stopping the oil production in our land, you can't be extorting oil from our land, killing us, using the money to buy arms and ammunition to kill us, using the money to buy tanks and bring the tanks with the helicopter to bombard our place. And you say we are going to keep quiet so you kill everybody? No. So the reason why you, if you are listening to me today on radio, on Biafra, on Voice of Biafra, 97.5 FM, and you are in Biafra land. The problem you are having is that you have not started attacking the oil installation. You have not started making sure that nobody, you know, take oil from our land again. Because this is getting too much. Any day we begin to interrupt the oil installation until they listen to our cry, until they listen to reason why we must now get our freedom, you can never get freedom. These people can never talk. Because for us to get this Biafra, they must talk, whether you like it or not. We have to force them to get involved. How do we force them to get involved? So that we are going to force them to get involved. This particular business they have in our land must be interrupted. And this is Verhandlungen sei es gelungen, dass die EU den ganzen Winter über versorgt sei, auch ohne Russland. Die wichtigsten Lieferanten für Flüssiggas sind die USA, Katar, Ägypten, Aserbaidschan und Nigeria. Wie hoch aber der Preis? Do you hear that? Aserbaidschan or, or, or Nigeria. So they are telling you that it does not matter what they do with Russia. If they're telling you that it does not matter what it does not matter what Russia do. That is why I first of all informed them, like I told you, that the government have assigned a lot of people to watch our program. That is why I informed them already that we are aware, we have the knowledge. Like I've just informed you that ECOWAS have their own people now watching this program, and they are now scheduling the activities from the ECOWAS office according to the directive we are given. I am telling, I'm being, I'm being sincere. Every activities of ECOWAS from now to the next six months have been planned to go in line with Biafra sit at home. I am telling you something before God a man. This is, this, you know, our intel is, when it comes, it comes like, we come lab cinema, okay? Our intel have revealed that the office of ECOWAS in Abuja have people assigned mm -hmm. to listen to our program. And those people are giving feedback to them. And whatever we say about the civil disobedience, they are planning their mm -hmm. schedule and their event to go to suit our seat at home. So if you don't know where the seat at home has gone, my brother, my sister, my Biafra people, your seat at home is being held in the office of ECOWAS. Your seat at home, Monday seat at home, is being held and discussed at the office of ECOWAS in Abuja and, of course, in the other part of Africa. Your seat at home is shaking Nigeria. That you sit at home that people are fighting and they are doing everything to stop is actually what is now working very well. 
And by the time the economic sanction kick off, you see this woman that I played the video now telling you how Nigeria is supplying oil and they don't care about Russia. They are going to minus Nigeria. Once we begin to interrupt the oil production, they are beginning to count Nigeria. That, okay, now we have issue in Nigeria. They are fighting for their freedom, so we minus Nigeria. They will begin to discuss it. They will begin to lose money. They will begin to lose the money they are making from our land. That they don't care about us. We are being killed every day. Nobody talk. But look at Ukraine. Look at Ukraine. Ukraine is a country on its own. We know. But when somebody is killed in Ukraine, everybody talks about it. When one single person is killed, when a bomb is dropped somewhere in Kremlin, everybody talks about it. But in our mm -hmm. own land, your own governor, somebody that comes from the same region with you, like people like somebody like Hopus or Dema, will bring military and bring helicopter to bombard our own people. In quest to please the Fulanis and to remain in power and nobody is talking our women are being killed our children are being killed there is no school there is no hospital there is no road there is no you know there is no thing to show that you know you have government but every day every month your senators are being paid in millions every month your House of Representative members are being paid in millions. Every month, governors are receiving millions. Every month, House of Assembly members are receiving millions. Every month, local government chairman are receiving millions. No food, no medical, no medication, no nothing, no maternity, no social amenity, no school. No, 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 nothing. There is nothing to show, but the money is there. But let me tell you, when we talk, they say, hold your politicians accountable. We cannot hold the politician accountable when they are now being protected by the same corrupt system of Nigeria. The only way we can hold our politician responsible is when we have our own country. Different from what you do in Nigeria. And if nothing happened, hey, you can say, hold your, then if we don't hold them responsible, you know that we have failed. But how can you hold somebody responsible in Nigeria? Where uh, uh, um, uh, uh, Abba Kaere is suing the federal government for violation of his human right. The same Abba Kaere arrested mm -hmm. a, a vast, claiming that a vast is a kidnapper. Nobody actually know whether Evans is a kidnapper or not. We have not come to hear any witness since Abba Kaere paraded Evans. We have not come to hear somebody coming to witness that, yes, I am witnessing against Evans. No witness anywhere. We have, at least I have not heard about that. If anybody have witnessed, I have not. There has never been any witness against Evans. <laughs> But they are parading him. They want to sentence him. They have already sentenced him to death because he's an Igbo man. I'm not supporting crime. I'm not supporting a criminal. But this is a fact. Why there is a criminal, a, a kidnapper called Wadume? Wadume own is very clear. Wadume is that he is a, is a distance from the north and you don't hear about Wadume today. <laughs> Nobody hear about Wadume today. You don't hear about him. But this Evans has been paraded everywhere. Today, our leader is in DSS dungeon. They went all the way to Kenya to kidnap our leader. Now, they cannot even, even bring our leader to court and try our leader if they think that he committed any crime. But Abba Kaere have committed international crime. And today, I'm making it very clear that he did not only involve in drug trafficking, Abba Kaere is a member of the cartel of South, South America. He's a member of one of the drug cartel. So they should know that FBI should get involved in Abba Kaere. He is the channel that they use to push narcotics and drugs to America and to Europe. 
So it is not a case of MDLA. Abakaire drug case is FBI case. It is FBI case. Because he is the representative of the cartel. The drug cartel in Nigeria. So it is not issue of uh, NDLA. And I want people, I want the, the international community, international community, especially the FBI, who are already looking for him to answer the internet fraud, to look into that because he is the contact person in Africa. He is a member of the drug cartel in South America. It is through him the thing comes to Monitora Mohammed Airport to Abuja Nandazikiwe. He was he is the one who controls everybody, who, who tell you who the drug will pass, who to pass and who not to pass, with the contact he has from the Escobar, uh, Escobar or, or whatever they call him, the people of the Escobar, and he comes to Nigeria through Brazil and all that. And then he, so so they must you know they must go beyond the NDLEA. It is a, it is an international uh, is an international drug cartel. Uh, uh, this thing. So he must he must be investigated and taken to America for that. All right. So having said this, I want you people to understand the need and the reason why you must go after the production, the oil to stop it, because that is the only way to call the attention of the international community that we are not interested any longer in one Nigeria. And of course. At the same time, we're demanding the freedom and the release of every political prisoner, including Mazen Namdikan. Including Mazen Namdikan. So, this video I've just played here is what is happening right now in Europe. Right now in Europe. I want to play the video again. So, I will tell you exactly what they were talking about. One moment. Moment. Verhandlungen sei es gelungen, dass die EU den ganzen Winter über versorgt sei, auch ohne Russland. Die wichtigsten Lieferanten für Flüssiggas sind die USA, Katar, Ägypten, Aserbaidschan und Nigeria. Wie hoch aber der Preis? Those who understand Deutsch. Verhandlungen sei es gelungen, dass die EU den ganzen Winter über versorgt sei, auch ohne Russland. Die wichtigsten Lieferanten für Flüssiggas sind die USA, Katar, Ägypten, Aserbaidschan und Nigeria. Wie hoch aber der Preis? You see, it does not matter what Russia do. It does not much matter what Russia do if Russia stop them from getting gas that they are getting gas from these countries. Do you see that? And they mention Nigeria. And they are getting gas from Nigeria. They don't know the gas they are getting from Nigeria, what are, in what condition the people that they are getting the gas from, how the condition they live. They are not interested in that. So we need to stop them from getting the gas from Nigeria. We need to let them minus Nigeria, just like they are minus in Russia, let them minus Nigeria. Yeah, so that uh, they will ask question, why do we minus Nigeria? Why is Nigeria not? And they will begin to ask question. Since they believe, or since they pretend not to know that people are being killed every day in our land to compel us to stay in one Nigeria. Since they pretend not to know that the Nigerian government has sponsored terrorism and we don't want to be part of it. Since they pretend not to know that every sector of Nigeria government is dominated by the terrorists. So since they pretend not to know all those things, we will make them to know by making sure that that particular oil they are now focusing and targeting, that if Russia did not give them gas, they are going to get it from Nigeria, is interrupted to the maximum. So if you want to get your independent, if you want to see Mazin Namdikanu release, if you want to see Biafra being discussed in international community, channel your anger to oil and gas. Channel your anger. Biafrans, channel your anger to oil and gas. Channel your anger to natural gas and everywhere you see pipeline in your land, channel your energy there. Because they don't value your, your life. They value your oil. This is a fact. 
we have been able to research and research and research. The only thing they value is your oil, your natural resources. They don't value your life. If you like, die in million. Nobody care. If you like, let the Nigeria government bring a, a bombardment to your land and kill everybody. You can't see it in CNN. You can't hear it in France 24. You can't hear it in Euro, Euro News. You can't see it in DWTV. You can't see it in BBC. Of course, BBC but we always gossip with that. But when the oil production in Nigeria is ground to zero because of Biafra agitator, let me, let me tell you, it is not a militant too. No. It has not, let it not be militant. Let it be Biafra. Let it carry the name Biafra agitators. Did you hear me? Let it not be Niger Delta militant. Let it not be Egbesu. Let it not be any name. Let it not be any Avenger. Let it be Biafra Liberation Force, Biafra agitators mm. that are responsible for making sure that their voice are heard. Let it not be anybody fighting for resource control. We are not interested in resource control. Let it not be anything that, let it not have anything to do with anybody fighting for resource control. Okay? Make sure that it is Biafra has been activated. Biafra freedom liberation has been activated. So if you want Biafra to come, channel your anger to oil and gas pipeline. If you know you want Biafra and you want Europe to talk about you, channel your anger to where they are having business in our land. They don't care about us. They care about our oil. They care about our natural resources. They care about those things that they are taking away from our land. I am calling on you today, the entire Biafra people, warriors of Biafra, freedom fighters, all volunteers, everybody in Biafra land, channel your energy to this particular oil and gas in our land. And the Europe will talk. America will talk. Britain will talk. Channel your energy there. The, the price for oil is very, very high now. Channel your energy there. Nigeria government will run around. They are going to bring us to the table. I am telling you the fact. You see, let me tell you, if you think that I am, I am you know, joking, I want, you, I want to ask you, do you know how many people that hope or them and Nigeria federal government have killed from January 1st to 21st of February 2022? Do you know? Do you know that between January to, to this February that more than 100 people have been killed? Are you aware of that? No, you don't know. Do you know that between January, I'm talking about January, between January 2022, 1st of January 2022 to 21st day of February 2022, do you know that thousands, 5,000 or 10,000 people home has been displaced. Are you aware of that? Do you know any, do you hear any, anybody talking about it? Do you hear anybody in Germany talking about it? Do you hear anybody in United Kingdom talking about it? Do you hear anybody in America talking about it? They are not talking about it. They don't care. Do you know that in a, in a community in Imo State, we are producing community where the hopos or them are sent military to go and burn them. Is it Izombe? Do you know when they born Izombe? When Izombe was born, did you hear it anywhere apart from the channel television when they went there to go and walk around? Do you hear it in a, in a CNN? No. But in Izombe, the oil from Izombe is going to Germany. It's being used in Germany. The oil from Izombe is being used in America. The oil from Izombe is going almost all over the world where Nigeria oil is being sold and used. From Izombe. These people are using our oil. They don't know that the Nigeria government are killing our people, displacing them. So Izombe is an oil producing community in Imo State. When they were killed, the community burned Military came there and burned them and all that. You don't list it, you don't hear it anywhere in CNN. By the time we stop them from producing oil in Zombie, CNN will come. 
by the time we stop them from producing any oil from Izombe, any country that have business interest in the oil in Izombe will talk about it. If it is Germany, Germany will talk. If it is Italy, Italy will talk. If it is Netherlands, Netherlands will talk. And before you know it, Europe will start talking. So let us channel our energy to this oil. Any place you see oil producing community in Biafra land, let's see your need. Let's see your need. We cannot continue to live like that. That is the message I'm bringing to you. And today, they denied access to Mazin Namdekano, the leader of, of Biafra movement. Reason? Nobody knows. Because he's an Igbo man. Because he's a Biafran. If you don't understand what I'm saying, if you do any other thing going forward, you are wasting your time. The only way Biafra will come is to stop the economy. As you are doing that, you are also fighting the government. As they are coming to our community to kill us because we don't have missile to fire at them. We don't have aircraft to use to kill them as they are killing us. Go to this oil installation. Go to this oil pipeline. Make sure you reduce every oil production to zero. We don't have ammunition to fight them back. We don't have tanks. We don't have military tanks and the hel helicopter and all that. We don't have warships. Okay? But we can fight and ground the source of that weapon. The place where they get the money to get those weapons, we are going to ground it to zero. So that when they, when they bombard our, our villages and our community, you know, when the bullet finish, they will not get the money to buy another bullet. When the military hardware get a spot, they, they will not get the money to buy another one. So when they are coming to our community to kill our young men and our young women, go to the oil installation, any place you see it, bring it down. My people, if you don't know that the war, they have declared war on us, you know it today. I want you to go to him where people are talking Imo State, Imo State. Go to Imo State and see what is going on there. Go to Imo State. Let, you know, let us have, you know, a, some kind of fact finding. Let the international community, before international community will do anything, let them send uh, envoy, let them send uh, fact finding to Imo state, to a Bonny state, to see what the government have done to their own people. Before they can talk about anything. So the only way, you see, if we continue just like the way that I'm, I gave them the idea how to end money ritual. Just like the way I gave them the idea how to end money ritual, this idea I am bringing now is the idea that will bring us Biafra and release everybody that has been incarcerated in DSS dungeon. The idea is that as they are attacking and killing our women and children, just because you can't kill them back because you don't have all it takes, you don't have all the weapons that so go with everything you have, go to where the oil is and make sure you reduce it to pieces. And let them begin to fix it. Before they finish fixing it, you go back there again, bring it down. As they are fixing it, you go back there. Let your energy, let everything you have now be channeled to the economy, grounded the economy, which is the oil. Because we don't have, you see, the other day they said they are bringing 2,000 soldiers to come and kill us. And those two thousand, those those two thousand soldiers, they come with uh, probably how many uh, how many gunboats or helos? Nobody know. You know, do you have helos? We don't have helos. We don't have machine gun. We don't have a gunboat. Okay, <laughs> we don't have all those things. So what do you do? Anything you have, take it to the oil. Once the biggest pipeline goes down, boa, you have won those two thousand soldiers. Because the money they used to sponsor them is coming from the oil. So that this Europe that is pre pretending that they are not seeing what we are crying every day, they will begin to talk. So that those who have business interests in our land will know that we are at war. Not the war of a, of a chaotic war. 
where they will come secretly and you'll be hearing um, uh, Olu is under attack. If it is under attack, uh, also is under attack. No. The level have changed. The time for those kind of things have passed. We don't go into Olu is under attack. Um, uh, Benassa, the NASA is under attack. Uh, the military, they are coming to... No, 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 no. Take the war to the economy where they get the money and we, our demand is that first of all, before we do anything, before we listen to anybody, those military men that they have now besieged and led siege on our land must be pulled out. They have to pull the military out of our land before we can talk, before we, can, we are ready to talk to anybody. So the idea I am giving you now is the best idea how to get Biafra, how to get Mazinam the Kano out, is to make sure that the cost of keeping him is higher than the cost of releasing him. How does the cost of releasing Mazinam the Kano will be higher? It's because of this. And let me tell you, it has nothing to do with Mazinam the Kano. Mazinam the Kano is not ordering it. And we have made it very clear. This is, a, this is going to be a consensus by the entire Biafra people. So it is not Mazinam Dikano. Mazinam Dikano is there, and we are not taking order from him. We have made it very clear. If they want us to take order from Mazinam Dikano, and they want Mazinam Dikano to come and say stop, they should release him where he can talk, not uh, staying in the DSS dungeon and talk to us. We don't know who is talking. In fact, we don't trust anybody anymore. When it comes to Biafra, we don't trust nobody. We don't trust the lawyers. We don't trust nobody. But when it comes to the legal issue, we trust the lawyer because that is their job. But when it comes to anything message coming that relates to Biafra struggle, we don't trust nobody. Don't trust me. So before you say tomorrow night, they say, okay, he said don't trust the lawyer. Don't trust me. I trust myself. Okay? We don't trust anybody. The only thing we will trust is your action. The only thing we will trust is what you do, what you say. The only thing we are going to trust is your own action that we see. We don't trust anything that you did not do. We don't trust anything that you did not say. We don't trust your body language. We trust the thing that comes out of your mouth. We trust what you say. We trust what you do. And the, on, in this particular struggle, the, you know, it is not struggle anymore because we have gone over that, that stage. We are now in liberation. So in this liberation, anything that has to do with Biafra, we don't trust nobody. Nobody should give us message from, from DSS Dungeon. If the message has to do with the legal issues like today, they deny the, the, the lawyer's access, yes, we are going to accept it. If the, if the message has to do with information regarding the court proceeding, we are going to accept it. But if any message that is coming regarding the struggle for Biafra, what we should do and what we should not do, we will not accept it. We will not accept it. The reason why you see that there are going to be, there will be, you know, insulting our lawyers is because we have not taken a decisive uh, measures and actions. We have not taken that. They don't know how, they, you know, you, they need to know how serious we are. So my Biafra people, if you want your freedom to come, if you want your freedom to come, if you want the international community to talk about you, that you are also a human being, that you are not even aliens that talk about it. Even animals have rights in Europe. Even animals are well respected. They have rights. That is what we call the animal right in Europe. So you are a human being like those in Europe. And because nobody is listening and talking about the way you are being butchered every day, let us begin to open this movie for them to watch. And you don't waste your time by, you know, uh, making noise. You don't waste your time by, you know, it is not just a bubago. A bubago is, a bubago is declared wanted. Any a bubago you see is our enemy. So, but let us channel our energy to make sure we speak in a language the Nigeria and the entire international community will understand. And if anybody thinks that what we are going to do is wrong, they should come to our land and leave. And let me tell them how to live in, in Biafra, in Biafra land. Let me tell them how to be a Biafran. Not only a Biafran, it is not just a Biafran. 
Let us tell them how to be a Nigerian. A Nigerian that you can't travel without being insulted by immigration officers. A Nigerian that when you have Nigeria passport, you are ashamed hiding it. Some of you have read a uh, red cover to cover your passport, your green passport. You have passport and you don't support Biafra because you think if you support Biafra, uh, they are going to arrest you. But each time you want to travel with your proud Nigeria, proud Nigeria, you cover your passport. You go to airport, you cover it. You go to this thing, you buy red, you buy red cover to cover your green, your green passport, cost passport. But you are be the one to say, hey, Nigeria, you know, let us see how to manage Nigeria. But some of you cannot be proud to show your passport, Nigeria passport, in when you stand on the line at the airport. You will be hiding it. Some of you will be hiding it. Immediately you go to the to the immigration officer, you bring it and open it. Look at my you are hiding it. Why other people in Europe, why other people in Africa, why other people in Asia, when they bring their passport, they are putting it like this with their ticket inside it. They hold it in their hand. Go, you will not see no Nigerian person holding his passport. Everybody will put his passport in the pocket or they use something to cover it. Faking life. Fake. Fake life. I have seen it several. Sometimes I pay attention. Sometimes when I go to UK, when I go to London, I will be making sure I am counting the people that are using Nigeria passport. And every person you see in Heathrow will be hiding his passport or her passport. This one will hold it like this. This one will hold it like that. And then other people will use red and something to cover it. They will hold it. When they go to the immigration person, they open it and look around. Is he seeing me? I don't want to know. And you see them, they'll be funny. Some of them will be speaking from there as if they come from they, as if they were born in America. <laughs> you have not even traveled to, you have not even spent six months in London. You are already speaking like, like an American person. But you are having a Nigeria passport. And the worst is that, that the worst is that those uh, uh, immigration at the airport, they know how to disgrace you now. Hey, it does not matter what you formal. If you like, make you speak everything, you close your nose. Once they see Nigeria passport, you are subjected to scrutiny. Hey, they will bring your eye. They will look you. They will look this one. They will look that one. That is when people that are around you will know you are coming from a shithole country. No matter how you had your passport, once you present your passport and it's in Nigeria, they will use microscope to look it. Microscope, hey, Jenna. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> they will use it to look at your picture, whether you have forged it, because that is the only thing you do in Nigeria. Forgery. Forgery is the only thing you do. So why are you deceiving yourself? Why can't you be proud? If you think Nigeria is for you, why are you not proud to fly your passport, do it like this? Let everybody know that Republic of Nigeria you will see people will desert away. You know, people will just leave you from the line. But me, I do differently. Whenever I am traveling, and especially to London, I will always, I want to feed my eyes. I, you know, it's like excursion. I want to feed my eyes. I want to see how those Dundee, those, those mumus are behaving mm -hmm. at Heathrow Airport. See them, uh, some of them are, you know, with their hair, especially women. They will have their hair everywhere. You know, you know this kind of hair. When I want to travel to London, they go to do the best hair you can think of. They carry the hair. The hair will fill everywhere. They carry it back. Nigerian passport. And then they hide it. They hide it. Only the time you know that they have Nigerian passport is when the immigration will be asking the question. What do you come here to do? Who is speaking to you? Which address are you going? <laughs> they subject you to another interview. Ah, another interview. And you know what? Sometimes, <laughs> getting Niger getting visa, getting British visa, United Kingdom visa, is not, uh, is not it. <laughs> ah, don't think that you have visa means that you enter London. No, 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 no. You don't know what, you don't know this country. You don't know your country. If they give you visa in Nigeria, you have not crossed to, I am telling you, I am telling you before God, a man. You have not succeeded, though. 
Don't think that uh, you have collected visa now, you are going to begin to arrest everybody in your street, that you are going to London. No. You will be turned back if you are not, if care is not taken. So you will go and pass another exam at the port of entry. That is where you are going to, your prayer is not to get the visa at the embassy. Your prayer is to beat the immigration after they have granted you visa. Because of what? Nigeria. Nigeria. Some people will be, will be schooled how to pass the immigration in Heathrow. <laughs> I am telling you. Some people will go to school how to pass the immigration at the Heathrow. Because you have the visa. The country that colonize you. The country that colonize you. This country colonize you. You are not the only country they colonize you. Other countries they colonize, they have different laws for them. Different laws. Some of them, some of them, they have visa free. But you, you don't have. And those people that have visa free, they are gaining nothing from them. They don't have oil. Some of the country that have visa free to United Kingdom, the United Kingdom colonized, they don't have oil. They are not getting anything from them. But your own is that they are getting everything from you. It is because of you that London and the United Kingdom is standing. But they can't allow you to enter there. They can't allow you. They will humiliate you, disgrace you, cajole you. On top of your own, on top of the money they get from your natural resources in your land. What I'm telling you now is nothing but the truth. And you know it. You know it. So my people, if you are in Biafra land, it is time we fight back. We fight back with everything available to us. They are killing us. They are killing our women. They are killing our children. And then when we want to enter their country, they subject us to all manner of disgrace. They dehumanize us. They dehumanize us. They humiliate us. And they are making money from our land. And it is time we stop that oil from running until we come to a round table and discuss our coexistence. So if you want to, if you are actually serious, I know that you are not following the footsteps of the criminals in the DOS. The people that we thought they were fighting for Biafra only to come to realize that they are not fighting for Biafra. So if you know you are fighting for Biafra and you are in Biafra land and you are a volunteer and you are anything you do from now on going forward, target the economy of Nigeria. Target the economy. Target the economy because I now have basic We are not looking face anymore. Nigeria has declared war on Biafra and we do not have what it takes to fight back. So we are going to use whatever that is available to us to fight. So what do we do? In 1967, Nigeria fought us with hunger. Right? They fought us with hunger. They had a blockade. Our children, millions of children died out of starvation. This time around, we are going to fight them through the economy. I am telling you, if you do what I am telling you now, before the end of this December, before the end of this year, Biafra is here. I swear to God, before the end of this year, you will be seeing Biafra knocking at your door. It is time we fight them, fight the economy, fight the economy and bring the economy down to zero. Because we have it is in our land and we know how to make it happen. So the reason why I'm making this broadcast, I'm making this polarization today is because I know that their uh, agents are here watching me and taking record. So let them know that we are prepared and the business is not as usual anymore. We now mean business. We now mean business. The insult is too much. I want you to understand that the leader of indigenous people of Biafra is under detention and 
the lawyers went to visit him. They denied them access for no reason. For no just reason. And we are going to address that. I want to ask you a question. Why are you not concerned that somebody want to go and bring himself to be as to be used as a witness against Mazin Namdikan? I want people, those who are, you know, some people are worried. They say, oh, this guy want to, whether the thing is true, because you know a lot of propaganda is, you know, a lot of propaganda is on air now, so I don't trust anything I see. I don't actually trust anything I see. There are a lot of propaganda. So people will be saying, oh, uh, this guy want to witness, this guy want to witness. And I begin to ask myself, witness about what? <laughs> you know, what is he going to witness? You know, I don't understand. You know, because the thing, <laughs> I still don't get it. Somebody want to go to witness. Witness about what? As, as an eyewitness or what is he going to witness? <laughs> you know, I don't understand. Because... You know, you see, people don't. I trust, uh, I trust uh, uh, Zekome and uh, and uh, and uh, uh, Barista Ejiofor. So what, what is he? What is he going to witness? Witness that he saw Onion do, doing something, or witness that he had he overheard Onion do doing something, or witness that uh, he, he is a Biafran or he, he he come from the east, and so he was there when so. I don't. You see, it will be very interesting. You know, if that guy actually. Is that guy actually going to witness? Because I really don't understand what he's going to witness. Has, is, he, is he an eyewitness to anything? Or just coming to tell story a hearsay? <laughs> you know, you see, sometimes illiteracy is not good. Illiteracy is not good. And because we have, we have the judiciary that are controlled by the nomadic people, there are people that don't know, actually know law, you know, so a lot of things are a mess. Otherwise, the people that are admitting uh, this guy, uh, giving this guy affidavit to come and witness against Mazen Namdekano, if actually that is true, <laughs> I, I don't believe it because a lot of things are flying these days. Uh -huh. But I don't believe it. I don't believe that this guy is going to witness. But if, like, it is, it is true, what is he going to witness? <laughs> is he going to witness hearsay? Or is he going to witness that I was there? <laughs> because... <laughs> People should understand how law works, especially when, you know, <laughs> you know, you know, this is just, uh, it, the, the witness will be inadmissible, inadmissible. It cannot be, you know, any witness that guy is coming to do is completely a waste of time. It's completely a complete waste of time. It is going to be inadmissible because you can't just come to witness a hearsay. You can't just come to say, I saw when you didn't see. <laughs> You can't just come to, you know, so I wonder what, you know, people are talking about it. So I don't know why, I don't know what is it, what is going, what is he coming to witness? You coming to witness that IPOB is an organization. Or he's coming to witness that IPOB, IPOB are killers. <laughs> he's coming to witness that IPOB is what? Did IPOB, did he see where IPOB kill somebody? Or did he, you know, I don't get it. But anyway, it left for those who, if actually that is true, so it will be very interesting. <laughs> Let us watch how this guy is going to be a witness in something that he knows nothing about. <laughs> a witness to, I don't know what he's witnessing. He is not in Biafra land. He was not in Biafra land. He just came back deported. And ever since then, he has been hiding somewhere in the north. So why, what is he coming to? I don't know whether this is true, but... It, it is, you know, everything is possible. But let me just tell him now. Let me tell him now in case if actually he is coming and if actually it is true that he's going to witness. Before you go into witnessing against somebody, you are going to be placed under oath. Okay? You are going to swear that everything you are going to say in this court will be nothing but the truth. And remember, if you give false witness, it can also be used against you. If you give false witness in court against somebody, a criminal investigation can be opened against you. So do not think because Nigeria is corrupt, 
And so, Fulanis are giving you money, you live in their house, and they are feeding you, so they have brought you to come and say yes, and say yes, they ask you this, you say yes. Remember, where your right stop is where another person's right start. Remember, no matter how corrupt Nigeria is, Nigeria judiciary is, no matter how corrupt, you can also be a victim after you give false witness. So if you are going to witness against Mazin Namdekano, make sure that what you are going to say in that court is something that you saw with your eyes, is something that you are sure of, is something that you witness and you are an eyewitness, and not something that you hear say, and not something that somebody told you. I, do, I hope I made my, my point very clear. Mm -hmm. So my message to that guy, if actually that is truth, I am now giving you legal advice. The legal advice I'm giving you now is that whatever you say in that court, if it is false, will be used against you. A criminal investigation can be opened against you for, witness, for giving false witness in court. So everything you are going to say must be something you know and you saw with your eyes and you witness it and not something that somebody told you. Otherwise, if you lie in the court, the lawyers to Mazin Namdekano can initiate a very serious uh, suit against you and compel the police to investigate you. And let me tell you, it is within the ambit of law to that you will be investigated if they find out that you lie, of which we know we are going to press every button to make sure that you, you know, if you lie. So make sure you are not going to be used and dumped at the end of the day. And let me tell you, if you come there to say, I hear say, I hear say, it becomes inadmissible. Your, your testimony will not be taken into consideration. <laughs> it's as simple as that. So let me just, so those people that are, that are, you know, worried about uh, him coming to witness, I don't know, you know, it doesn't hold water because his witness is void, null and void. It doesn't hold water. It will not be admissible in court. That is just it. Now, the, uh, the issue of, uh, of uh, uh, our, our lawyers not giving access to Simas in Amdekano is as a result of the failed solution and because of the uh, these uh, criminals who have sold Mazin Namdekano. And we must not accept that. That is why every Biafran must rise up and live up to expectation. The reason why our leader is being cajoled, the reason why the legal team is being humiliated is because we have not given these people what they really, the language they really understand. We have not. So what it means is that Biafra people whom Mazinam the Kano was representing are not living up to expectation. We are not. I'm very, I'm very serious. We are not living up to expectation. That is why they can insult the lawyers that is why they have no regard to court judgment minus changing of cloth. Because I, we don't autopilot, we don't want our leader to change cloth. We don't want our leader to change cloth because we don't trust anybody. We don't trust anybody. So we don't want our leader to change cloth. We know how they bought shoe for somebody and the person died. We know how they bought shoe. This IPOB, these criminals in IPOB, they bought shoe. The day I will make that exposition is coming. Not yet. Not yet. We know how they bought shoe and give to somebody. The person wear that shoe and the person died. So nobody know what these people are planning. Those who say that you know, if you do not understand why I said I, I no longer advocate for our leader to change his cloth. This is my reason. I was the one who raised the alarm in the first place. 
It was because of the alarm I raised that made them to begin to talk about cloth. <laughs> right? It, it is me that raised the alarm. All this month, nobody talked about the cloth of our leader. He appeared the first time. He appeared the second time. Everybody was gallivanting. Everybody was doing fine. And nobody talked about it. It was when I raised the alarm that they begin to talk about the cloth. So I have come to take my alarm back. I know raise alarm again. I know advocate for change of cloth again for our leader. So I take it back. I take everything concerning changing of cloth back. Because we don't trust anybody anymore. We don't trust anybody. I am telling you that these people, these criminals in IPUB, they have killed a lot of people with poison. Poison. I am telling you, they killed a lot of people with poison. And we can't go into liberation with such people. Stained with their hands are stained with blood. The person who did that thing is listening to me now. The person who bought shoe and killed somebody is listening to me. Not only that, a lot of them, those who they did not kill through the through the uh, DSS, they killed them through through poison. They give poison, you die. Some people are still surviving their poison. So many people are so I am talking to you now. So many people are surviving poison in IPOB in, in Biafra land. So many people. They are suffering from poison now, as I'm talking to you. These are wicked, demonic people. Wicked, devilish people. People that can do anything for money. Anything. Anything. This Biafra struggle has become career for them. So they don't want Biafra to come. But God has brought us to end this their business. And the autopilot has become the only genuine and people of truth. Fight us. Fight us. And have yourself to blame. Fight us. And have yourself to blame. As simple as that. If you fight us, you will never remain the same. Any day you fight us, you, you will never, your life will never remain the same. You will never remain the same. Never remain the same. We are going to see again one moment. Without you, without you, I want to give me she this chicken. Is it spoiling or only destroy it? Destroy it for the measure, measure. Only destroy it, destroy it. I'm going to get. 